Welcome to the More Than Fitness Podcast. Hello, hello, ladies and gents, and welcome back to Minnesota number 97 on the More Than Fitness Podcast. Almost to 100 Minnesotes. Wild. Um, but on today's Minnesota, we are going to discuss designing a workout plan for fat loss. Now, if you're anybody who's been following me for quite some time, you know that I actually, uh, it's not that I'm against workouts for fat loss. I just think that if your primary focus on creating a, uh, your, 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 your primary tool for creating a calorie deficit to facilitate fat loss, you know, because a calorie deficit is required um, for fat loss, it makes much more sense uh, from an efficiency and effectiveness standpoint to use your diet for fat loss and then you use your workouts for muscle gain and strength and performance, right? Because it is much easier to simply not eat a 300 calorie donut than it is to run for an hour and burn those same 300 calories off, right? It takes you about three seconds to not eat a donut and takes you about an entire hour of jogging to burn 300 calories. So I think that it makes the most sense to focus on your diet for fat loss and then focus on your workouts for building muscle. However, I think that you can still throw in a couple of fat loss uh, uh emphasized programs every once in a while with the, the clients that I work with uh, every single month they get another plan that builds off the previous workouts and what I like to do for every three to four plans that I give them this type of fat loss style of workout assuming that their goal is fat loss uh, I give them something like what I am about to tell you uh, and and, and the main reason I think it's helpful, not only from a fat loss perspective, but from a muscle gain perspective, from a novelty perspective to make sure that it's, you know, actually fun on a consistent basis is that you have different uh, uh, adaptations that you're focusing on uh, or, or different strengths you're trying to work on. So, for example, one of those plans that I give them could be more strength biased. This doesn't mean the entire plan is biased around strength, but it's 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 biased more in the, let's say three to six rep range, for example, right? Another plan I'd give them would be more just a pure muscle building hypertrophy program. So that where would be where the rep range would fall in the about six to 12, you know, the typical bodybuilder type uh, rep range. And then in these types, of workout plans for fat loss, it makes sense to uh, ramp up the reps, right? So that they do more total work. Uh, and, and so, uh, yeah, this is this is just another way to hit a variety of rep ranges. Uh, and for this plan for fat loss, you emphasize, let's say, the 12 to 20 rep range, right? So, so that's what I'm trying to do here. This doesn't mean every single exercise is in this range. It just means uh, a part of them, right? And so let's go ahead and dig into the details. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I just laid that out for you guys to give you the conceptual, the conceptual, conceptual uh, first, and then now we can get into the nitty gritty. Um, all right. So the first thing I would say is your warm up. So instead of just jumping straight into your warm-up sets uh, on whatever you're about to work out for that day, uh, I think that some of the people listening to this will will typically warm up, do some whatever, stretching, foam rolling, uh, maybe some low-intensity cardio or something like that. But if you aren't, for fat loss, I want to make sure that you are doing this. I think one easy way to uh, that I, I work in more cardio with my clients for it to not actually feel like cardio is instead of throwing in like... 20 minutes of cardio at the end of a certain workout. I say do 10 minutes in your warm up and then 10 minutes as a cool down, right? And that kind of together, uh, you can break it up and you can still get in 20 minutes of cardio for that workout. So for a workout plan for fat loss, the first thing I would say is warm up 10 minutes on some type of low to moderate intensity uh, cardio equipment. So this could be this could be a rower. This could be on the treadmill. This could be the bike, the elliptical. Uh, you could go play basketball or something. 
right? Just something to, to get the blood flowing, to get a little bit of your heart rate up, maybe get your body or definitely get your body temperature up, but maybe break a sweat. Uh, that's going to be the first thing I would recommend. Next, what I would recommend is focusing on the compound full body lifts because one, this is going to be the biggest bang for your buck whenever it comes to building muscle and strength, but also you have to just think about it from a pure energy expenditure uh, um, comparison. Doing heavy squats is likely going to burn way more calories than doing heavy leg extensions, right? So it makes sense to make the majority of your exercises for the workout plan, uh, make them compound lifts where you have to use uh, your entire body or at least multiple different joints, body parts, et cetera. And actually how I would I would set it up is I would use cluster sets and I would make them, um, I'm going to throw out a bunch of words here. So I'd make it cluster sets and then antagonistic paired sets. So for example, let's say we pair dumbbell bench press with dumbbell rows, right? So instead of supersetting those, I want you to do a cluster set. And the difference between these are very subtle. So in a, in a typical superset, you would do your set of dumbbell bench, and then you would immediately, without any rest, go right into the dumbbell rows, right? That's a superset. With a cluster set, you're going to do that exact same thing, except you're going to rest 45 seconds between the exercises. So it would be dumbbell bench press, and then as soon as you get done with the bench press, rest, you know, 30 to 60 seconds tops. And then you go right into the dumbbell rows. And then after you get done with your set of dumbbell rows, another 30 to 60 seconds rest. And then you go back into the dumbbell bench press. See, so instead of doing the superset just back to back, you rest a little bit in between those. And what that does is it allows you to catch your breath a little bit and also hopefully um, diminish the reduced performance you get from whatever exercise comes second. Because if you do dumbbell bench first and then dumbbell rows after that, the dumbbell rows are always going to have to sacrifice a little bit of energy because you just did a set of dumbbell bench. But if you put, if you squeeze in that rest in between those two, then your performance will likely be higher. Uh, um, and if you do this for every single exercise that you do, then, uh, you know, by the end of that session, your total net work that you've done is probably going to be higher than if you just did supersets or if you did a bunch of circuits. Uh, and, and because the goal is not, the goal is not to sweat as much as possible, right? Because you can have a really hard workout, but that still doesn't mean that you burn the most calories. And it definitely doesn't mean that the workout was the most effective in terms of building muscle and strength, right? So don't confuse sweat and how hard it is with uh, uh, effectiveness, right? I think that is super key here. So we can, we can bias towards fat loss, but we can also be smart about it, right? Um, so yes, compound lifts, cluster sets, and then I said antagonistic paired sets. So if that makes sense, antagonists, right? So we have the dumbbell bench press, which is your, your chest uh, and is a pushing movement. We want to uh, pair that with its antagonist, which would be something like a row. So it would be a pull, a push and a pull, right? The same thing would be... Um, like whenever people do buys and tries, for example, bicep curls and tricep extensions, right? Another would be like shoulder press and then like a chin up, for example, right? Um, so that's just one way to do that. And then as far as the rep ranges, I would definitely keep those a little bit higher, probably in the, yeah, I would say 12 to 12 to 20 range. Because I promise you, if you do sets of 12 to 20 on squats, if you're doing them correctly and actually challenging yourself, you're going to feel like death afterwards. Uh, especially if you're doing something like pairing squats with, I don't know if I would pair squats with deadlifts. That might be a recipe for disaster, especially for those psychos out there that would do this. Um, but maybe like Maybe do, you could do squats and then pair that with like RDLs or something. So like a Romanian deadlift um, uh, and even use like dumbbells or something to, to relax a, a, a little bit. But, but yeah, if you do high reps on those, your heart is going to be beating pretty fast. It's going to feel like cardio. Uh, and then as far as rest periods go, it's going to be minimal rest. Um, so I wouldn't say, 
I would say no longer than about two minutes. And this is where you want to be pretty strict with your rest periods too. Um, whenever you're, you're, you're programming for fat loss, you want to pay attention to those rest periods pretty closely. Um, so yeah, that's how I, how I would do it as far as the main beef of the workout. So you do compound lifts, you would do antagonist paired lifts, right? You would do cluster sets. So it's not a superset, it's a cluster set. And then you would do high reps in the 12 to 20 range and then minimal rest between sets. And again, don't, don't mistake um, sweating for effectiveness, right? And then the last thing would be some type of finisher. This is again, so like I said, uh, with my clients to, to fit in some cardio, I say, okay, do 10 minutes before and then 10 minutes after. Of course, you can fluctuate this based on however much cardio uh, you would like to do. But other than the pure duration, I would also recommend switching up the intensity. So if you had, let's say, for example, it was a lower body day and you did the squats and the deadlifts like a psycho together, right? And you were just exhausted by the time that that workout was done. Well, it probably makes sense to not throw in a hit cardio finisher at the end of that workout. However intense your workout was, you want to balance that out. Uh, you want to counterbalance that with whatever finisher you do. So if it's something, uh, so if it is some, your workout was really hard, the lifts were really hard, then I would balance that out with a finisher at the end, just like walking, right? Or just very slow pedaling uh, on the bike uh, or, or on the elliptical uh, or, or whatever. But you want to keep that intensity low. So the three intensities for the cardio finishers would be low, moderate, and high. Right. And so walking would be like a low intensity one. And then a moderate intensity would be something like jogging uh, or going on the elliptical and going somewhat fast, getting on the rower, uh, um, very brisk walking on an incline that can be moderate intensity as well. Uh, and then, of course, the last one is going to be hit, which would be something like doing the bike, doing cycles on the bike where you go 15 seconds as fast as you can and then resting for 60 seconds and then doing multiple cycles of those. So yeah, whatever your workout was, try and pair it with something uh, a little bit different. And if you're unsure, just go in the middle or opt for walking. I wouldn't go too crazy with the hit just because the entire workout you did was probably just like hit. Uh, so, so I would limit that to like once, once or twice per week. All right. And that is it for mini sewed number 97, designing a workout plan for fat loss. Thank you guys as always for listening and for watching. See ya.